If you want a clean garage, you need to clean stuff off before bringing it inside. Stuff like mountain bikes. But keeping a clean garage is not the only reason you should clean your bike. It actually works better and weighs less when it's not all gunked up. So this week, we're building a dedicated wash station to make things a little bit easier. Of course, we did have one of these back at Berm Creek, and it was great. In fact, quite a few other YouTube channels built wash stations of their own. And while I'd like to take credit for inspiring them, bike wash stations have been at trailheads around the world for decades. Their designs vary from a dedicated spot for washing bikes, to concrete pads with drains, to raised wooden platforms like the one we're building today. Except ours is going to have some goodies attached to it. And obviously, it's all going right here. There's good drainage, a water spigot, and Drama's been doing his dirt here, so the grass will all be dead soon anyway. First things first, we need to dig some holes for our footings. If this platform were for horses or pianos, I'd be digging these holes much deeper and wider. But for our purposes, these will do just fine. We'll pour in a third of a bag of concrete mix and throw in some water. Then tamp it down flat. Now with the magic of editing, we'll skip the part where we let the concrete set and push on. Now, these holes vary in depth, but these 2 by 8 still need to be level. So I'm tacking them in place with screws, making any necessary adjustments, and then sealing the deal with lag screws. I'll be using a whole lot of these once we get to building stuff out on Berm Peak. And speaking of which, I already started cutting my way to the future Berm Peak trailhead. If it didn't rain so much last week, this video would probably be about that. But we should be out there building stuff real soon. So thanks for your patience while we knock out these other non-bike related projects. Here's something I've never used before, joist hangers. I'm tacking them each in place temporarily with a screw, getting everything in place, and then nailing them in. I'm sure I could have mounted the hangers first, but they'd be in the wrong place guaranteed. They make screws you can use for this, but it's been so long since I've used a hammer and nails that I thought it'd be interesting. Most competent framers can drive a 10 penny nail in one to three hits. For me, not so much. On to the planks. Now, all this lumber is treated for outdoor use, so it's soaked in this nasty greenish preservative. Once that dries out, I can sand and stain this deck, or even paint it to match the house. But today, we won't be doing any of that. On the topic of treated lumber, I probably should be using gloves. Getting a splinter from this stuff is like injecting poison underneath your skin. Here, we're going to do a little plumbing before installing the planks. In addition to a hose for washing bikes, we'll be routing some water for use on a shoe bidet. A standard bidet is used to wash your butt, but this one's for the bottom of your shoes. 
It consists of a boot scrubber I got from the hardware store and a spot sprinkler with the ends cut off for size. Open this valve and it'll shoot water up at the soles of your shoes as you scrub the mud off of them. I could have split these at the spigot and saved myself all of this plumbing work. But the idea is that I'll only have one hose to disconnect in the winter. If we're to use this wash station year round, we can't leave it hooked up during a freeze. I learned that at my last house the hard way. Now on to the finishing touches. I left a lot of extra posts here to install a railing. Not that you could fall very far off this deck, but it will look nice. Plus, we can use the top of the railing to hang wet riding gear, or to place something down at chest height while cleaning. Just like the last wash station, we're using a pipe flange and a pipe as a bike hanger. It's simple and it works. For the tops of the posts, we're installing these solar lights which are designed to fit 4x4s. You can take bets on how long these will continue working. And to keep gloves up off the ground while drying, I'm installing two dowels. And finally, because this wash station is a trailhead amenity, the Berm Peak wash station is for bikes and dogs, not horses that pipe flange would most certainly fail. And on the other side of this marker is a bit of an Easter egg. Look familiar? As it turns out, Berm Peak isn't far from some of my favorite trails. Good trails are often out in the sticks. So I'm able to get in more rides now, early in the morning while the temperature and clouds are still low. With easier access to mountain bike trails and the ones we'll be building at Berm Peak, this wash station will be getting a lot of use. Washing a mountain bike is not complicated. Just brush the dirt off and use a light spray to rinse it. You may need to re-lube the drivetrain afterwards, but that's pretty simple too. This wash station is a lot better than the last one, if only because I don't need to drag the hose across the yard to use it. The shoe bidet is kind of amazing and doesn't soak the actual shoe as much as other methods. And since this wash station has a southern exposure, all my gear can dry out real well before it gets put away. Were I to build this over, I might have mounted the hose a bit closer to the bike hanger. This looks kind of pointless, but as I said, the idea was to be able to disconnect this whole thing in one shot, and we achieved that. I hope you enjoyed this build even though we already made a wash station last year. Now that we have all this infrastructure in place, we can get back to hacks, product reviews, and of course, the treacherous slopes of Berm Peak. Thanks for riding with me today and I'll see you next time.